Kit, did you, did you, are you a sporting man? I wouldn't describe myself as a sporting man, but I was forced to play cricket at school. Did you enjoy it? I hated every moment of it. <laughs> what about America, though? I mean, do you play any sports now? You live in America. American football, anything like that? Oh, no. Now I'm happily beyond the point where anyone can expect any activity of me whatsoever. Now, you have, you've lived in America for the last six years. Um, how do we look from over there? What, what's, what's your perspective on Britain from over there? Well, um, it looks nicer from over there. <laughs> then it, oh, that's a hard thing to say. <laughs> but um, it, it is very different. America is very different. England is quieter, cosier, uh, more restful. America is more vigorous and more ambitious. But also, of course, Americans are very, very friendly. You see, in England, you have to make friends. It's very tiring. <laughs> and when you've made them, you get stuck with them, which is more tiring. But in America, you never get stuck with anybody. <laughs> Three weeks is a meaningful relationship. <laughs> And that's, that's what you like. You don't like long-lasting relationships. No, they're worrying. <laughs> you were, remembering the Naked Civil Servant, your book in the, and the... And you were given a rough time over here when you lived here in your 20s and your 30s. Uh, do you think you'd have had a happier time now if you, were, if you were growing up here now, if you were in your 20s now? Would it be any different? Oh, yes, my life would be much easier now. Happier? Oh, yes. Why do you think that? Well, because anything goes. You see, <laughs> happiness, uh, life, the world has fallen into the hands of the young. See, when I... W there were no teenagers when I was young. You were a dear little thing till you were about ten years old, and then there was an embarrassed silence until you came out the other end. <laughs> For one thing, you had no money. There could never have been a teenage market because no, no teenagers had any money to spend. But do you think people would have been more tolerant of the way you behave and the oh, way yes. you dress? Oh, yes. Now, what... I mean, in New York, I live on the Lower East Side. There is nothing you could wear or do or say that would make you seem remarkable. There are people with rocking horse hairdos. The ends of their hair are gold and... The middle of their hair is green and the roots are black. And nobody is taking the faintest notice. <laughs> that doesn't please them, does it? Well, I don't know whether it pleases them. Um, I worry the punk movement began in England. But the sad thing is the punk movement is a hostile movement. The punk people are not happy. And that worries me. Because if you can do anything, if you can say anything, if you can wear anything, then surely you, your attitude toward the world should be benign, friendly. Yes, but surely if, if you're allowed to do anything you like, then there's no incentive to do anything. There is if you make chains for yourself. When the chains are not put on you by others, you have to exercise a certain amount of discipline. So you have to try and invent a way of going on, a way of living, a way of speaking, dressing, that represents you. And that is your discipline. And that tells you where to go, what to do, how to live. How would you describe yourself? Do you, th do you think yourself, do you see yourself, do you feel happy? Oh, yes, I am happy now. Um, on my passport, it says that I'm a writer, but really I'm a cross between an evangelist and a clown. <laughs> Where does the evangelism come in? Just as you just said, people should do whatever they want to do. Is that That's right. right. I, or, I only understand happiness, and all I can do is tell the people of America how to be happy.